All right, so this video is um, a demonstration of how to deploy a basic Flask application using Heroku. So um, I'll talk through a couple of the prerequisites in terms of installations and things, and then I'm just going to demonstrate with a very basic application deploying it to Heroku. Um, so uh, I'm in a directory here that is just contains my little app um, file with this basic Flask app that we should be familiar with. That's a starting place. Now, the the for the deployment, what we're going to use is we're actually going to use Heroku's command line interface. So, in order to um, download and install that, you if you're using a Mac, you should have Homebrew. Um, so, make sure to download and install Homebrew, and then once you have Homebrew, you can download and install the command line interface for. Uh, Heroku. If you have Windows, you can just download the, com the command line interface here um, as well. All right, so those are two, two initial installations. Now, a couple of other um, prerequisites are having access to, uh, I'm going to be using a bash terminal. Um, so if you're using a PowerShell, some of the commands may be a little different. Um, you'll have to figure that out. The, but the other thing is that I have a couple of Python packages uh, installed as well. One of them is pipenv, so you want to make sure to do a pip install uh, pipenv. And we want to do a pip install gunicorn. And we'll see a little bit more about G Unicorn later, but I'm really just going to kind of leave it as we're using G Unicorn. We'll see it just in a little file. Um, it handles um, requests and like makes makes our application more ready to be in a real deployment than um, some of the default settings um, out of the box from from Flask. All right, so once we have those installed, what we want to do is uh, I'm in my um, directory that just contains my app.py uh, file and I don't have any templates and I don't have any static files or anything like that yet so it's just this app.py the next thing I'm going to do is activate a virtual environment and I'm going to do this by writing pip env shell and again you need pip env um, installed in order to use this now what it's doing is it's creating a virtual environment and the virtual environment um, allows us to be consistent with versions of installs. So because we created this virtual environment, we don't have um, any of our ancillary kind of Python packages installed. So we're going to have to reinstall them. So I'm going to do a pip install. Uh, that's not pip install. Uh, pip install a flask. After we install Flask, I'm going to do a pip and I should do actually the G unicorn here. Okay, so after we install both of those, um, and I'm assuming that we have the command line interface for Heroku installed and set up, what we'll do is um, we'll commit this stuff and create a new uh, Git repository and then uh, we'll connect it to Heroku. Um, along the way, we're going to have to add two files. One of them is a requirements file, which we can create right now, actually. Um, if I do this command pip freeze, what we see is all of the Python packages that are required to run um, our current environment. Like this is, you see that we have Flask and GUnicorn installed, and there's a couple of others that come with Flask. Um, but these are all of the packages that we need to, to run this Flask app. So we're going to write this into a file called requirements.txt. And the way we do that is we say pip freeze and just a little arrow, and then we'll say requirements.txt. All right. And now you see we have this requirements file there. Um, and we also have this pip file, which is related to the virtual environment. We may delete this uh, later um, 
anyway, because we have a requirements file. So the net, the last file that we need is this thing called a proc file. So I, I'm going to create it in the command line, and then we'll just go over to the text editor and uh, interact with it. So to do that, I'll say touch, and I'm going to touch proc file. And it's important to use this name. Okay, and you see that now I've created this empty file called a proc file here. And what I'm going to do with this proc file is this is where GUnicorn comes into play. Um, we're just giving a basic uh, command here to use GUnicorn to run our app. And the way that we'll do this is we'll say web GUnicorn. And then our app is named app. Um, actually I wanna... And that's it. And just save this. Okay, but again, my this name is concurrent with what the name of my um, web app is. So now that we have all of this, we're gonna say I want to make sure that I've saved this. My I got my requirements. I got my proc file, and I have my basic application here. Um, then what I'll do is come back to the terminal and I'm going to make sure that I have a git repo created before I create a Heroku project. So I'm going to say git init. All right. And now I'm going to say Heroku create a prayer for deployment. And what this does is this creates a Heroku project. And now the big idea with that Git um, repository and what just happened was we should have uh, Git remote. Uh, sorry. Yes, called Heroku. So this is a key piece. Like we have to have that Git repo initialized before we create the Heroku project. Um, but once we do, we're pretty much ready to, to go. So um, now what we do to deploy this is, and again, like the big idea is that we add in this proc file to handle um, serving the application. And we tell, we're gonna tell Heroku what the Python packages are that are needed. Um, we'll see that once we push this up to Heroku, it, it shows that it detects a Python project. So, um, so real quick, we'll say git add. We add everything. We'll commit um, trying to launch. And now what we'll do is we'll say git push Heroku master. And we should see yeah actually I'm gonna stop this because this is one of the errors that I first made when I was using um, pip env depending on the way that the virtual environment is is built you'll you'll get different stuff and so using pip env creates this pip file and by default when I push this up to Heroku it's using the pip file to drive the installations and you'll get errors like there's no module named Flask. So I'm going to delete this um, this pip file. And I'm going to come back here and, and do another add and commit. And my message is going to be deleted uh, pip file. And now I'm going to push this to Heroku Master. And I, I knew that because I saw um, that it was using the pip file to do the installations. But now what we should see is we should see all of these libraries go through installations. And this will take a minute. Yeah, you see it downloading all of these other libraries.
All right, and so now it looks like it's done. So to check that, what I do is I say Heroku open and bingo. So there is my new app and you see the URL. Um, it has whatever you call your project.herokuapp.com. So if you want to change this, you can buy a URL and just plug it in on, um, on Heroku. You can just log into Heroku and that's pretty, pretty straightforward. The other thing is now if I want to, if I want to make any changes to my app, okay, um, I'll just go through that same process. So you, we'll see that uh, if I want to add another page, Right, and um, just bring in, we'll see how to use templates, right? Uh, save this and I'll create a new folder uh, called templates. And then here, pop a new uh, about. And uh, I'll just say, you know, All right, and, and so after I've made these changes, then the sequence of events is to do git add, git commit, and add a message uh, added about page, and then push it. All right, and now if we go back, um, if I go to forward slash about, it should, yeah, okay, great. So there you go, uh, pretty nice and straightforward. Now, if you, you know, some of the things that'll jam you up is going out of sequence there. Um, make sure that you, you have a Git repository initialized pretty early before you do anything with Heroku. Um, also, make sure that your G-Unicorn um, configuration is exactly like this, without uh, other spaces or different names, okay? If, you're, if your application is named something other than app.py, you'll have to change this app uh, value to reflect that. Um, great.